Ho, 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 let's get physical. It's Jordan here, back again with this festive update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the fourth week of December, December 21st until Jesus' birthday, Monday to Friday of this festive period. Retail, low print and inputs, plus our community spotlight where you choose your favorite physicals of the year and potentially win a physical Switch game. This month's Mario prize is Burry's Stars. Yes, the biggest, rarest prize we've had so far. So don't forget to get your submissions in. Next week is the final week. All right, this week's retail releases override to Super Mech League is the sequel to the giant mech fighting game we got not too long ago on the Switch. Interestingly, the original game's physical version was exclusive to Japan with English on the cartridge, but this sequel seems to be worldwide. Basically, if you want giant mechs beating the crap out of each other, then you may want to take a look at this one. The original was lacking in content, so hopefully this one has a little bit more meat to it. Rugby Challenge 4 is a very rare appearance of the sport on a Nintendo console. I can't remember the last time I saw a rugby game, to be honest. It's been a long time since I watched a rugby game, but I think fans of the sport will grab anything they can get a hold of, so hopefully it's a decent rendition of the sport. I believe this is only available in Europe and probably Australia, which is fine because I'm pretty sure Americans don't know what rugby even is. Also, big shout out to JP Switch Mania, one of the bigger collectors out there, for bringing to my attention the releases of Shaun the Sheep and Tabletop Racing. These were advertised as codes in a box, but actually they seem to have a cartridge. It's a Christmas miracle. These are exclusive to GameStop in the US. I have no idea what's going on with the European releases. Maybe they are still codes in a box. I don't know. All right, low print. Look out, guys. Another low print company is on the horizon. Forever Entertainment are dipping their toes into the market with Forever Limited. They've launched with three games, always ill-advised personally, uh, but they've got some good-looking products. The star is Panzer Dragoon. Yes, Limited Run already did this, but this will be a European release. There's a standard release, a limited release, and an exclusive release, each of which increase in price and scarcity. I may actually have to get this one, at least a cheaper option, the exclusive edition looks pretty nice, if I'm being honest, though. Secondly, they have Thief Simulator, which is a bit of a sales success on the Switch, mainly due to the endless 90% off that it gets. I mean, the game is fine. It's, it's fine, I guess. Uh, it looks like a bit of an asset flip, but apparently people like it. I didn't like it too much when I reviewed it. But anyways, uh, this one only comes in two editions, a standard release and a limited release, which uh, I have to be honest, includes some tat here. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of how I feel about most collector's editions. Uh, but I like what they've done with the cover art. Same with Sparkle Unlimited Collection, four games in the Sparkle series together. A bit too out there for my liking these games, but they're different, I'll give them that. And I actually really like the box art for this one. Uh, it's really simple but clean. The collector's edition is a bit better too, comes with a mug of all things. And Alexander Cato, our brand new executive producer, has chosen this as their pick of the week. And all of these three that I've just mentioned are available to pre-order now from their website and all come with a reversible cover too. Panzer Paladin is up for pre-order via limited run games. I remember a lot of people asking me if this was getting a physical release when it came out digitally, uh, and of course, limited run had to snap it up. This is an engaging action platformer with a pleasing retro style. If you like classic like NES style games built in the modern era, then this will be a good one for you. And if you like Shovel Knight, Blaster Master and such, uh, yeah, it's a good one to choose, I think. There's a standard and collector's release, and Jonathan Rumor and Gannicus have chosen this as their pick of the week. Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics is a very uh, mediocre tactics game based upon the now cancelled TV show. I've played this a little and I have to be honest, it sucked the soul out of me with its blandness. But maybe that's because I haven't seen the TV show, I don't know. Your thoughts please? You can pre-order this now via a standard release or a collector's edition which includes a terrifying plushie. Strictly Limited have their latest distribution effort via their partner store, Wonderboy Asher in Monster World. This is from In In Games, which is basically Strictly Limited at this point. But with a nice excuse to sell at retail. So yeah, Strictly Limited have a standard release with an exclusive cover variant that will be different to the retail release. And of course, they have a couple of expensive collector's editions. The super duper one has so much crap in it that I can't be bothered to tell you what's inside the box because I'll be here all day long. And this video is going to be long enough, guys. I've got to move on. And this is God of Resins Pick of the Week. 
Grindstone got a digital release on the eShop last week and at the same time a physical version was announced. One will be at retail next year, I'm not sure which regions but it's definitely come to retail in North America. Uh, but you know, like they've done before, I am 8-Bit are having a version exclusive to their website. This features an exclusive cover art as well as some crayons of all things and you can colour in the reversible cover which is all kinds of genius. It's weird but oddly charming. Like I said, there will be a retail version at some point but if you want this exclusive version, act now. And this is Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember that if any take your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and the pinned comment. Any purchase that you make helps support this series absolutely massively. And you know, in this time of world chaos, you guys have been unbelievable in your support. Really, I expected things to like go south uh, this year, but actually things are improving every month. And you guys, you are just absolutely wonderful. Thank you ever so much. Thank you so much. And in return, you can get a nice 5% off your order when checking out on Play Asia if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out for 5% off your order and support us at the same time. All right, Fight of Gods is a magnificent release. It's almost Jesus's birthday, and what a way to celebrate than having him beat the crap out of Father Christmas. Yes, various world deities duke it out in this schlocky, exploitative, but wholly magnificent physical release. Sadly, there is no English on this release due to contractual obligations, but it's a fighting game where Buddha belt Guan Yu, so uh, I don't think you know, language is an issue. This is grade A nonsense, and I love the fact it's getting a physical release. There's a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. That's even better, right? It includes a pin badge, original soundtrack CD, and an art book. I mean, this is Fight Crab levels of genius. And this is a Lolan JoJo's pick of the week. That guy's got sense. A Less Collection is the latest shooter series touched up by M2, the old ass game porting masters. Here you've got a handful of really obscure shooters for the master system and game gear. Sadly no Super Alest or Musha, but I guess you save those for another package. I think even hardcore shooter fans will struggle with the price on this one, as they are fun, but it will definitely not be of the like the high standard of Espera Day, which they did last year. I really, really do want it. Honestly, I really want this very much. I, I like it, but I'm gonna have to wait for a more reasonable price if that ever comes. Probably not. <clears throat> Earth Defense Force World Brothers is a spin-off of the well-loved Earth Defense Force series. Uh, they've gone for a weird voxel art style in this one, and I do know they do plan on a digital release in the West at some point, but the Japanese version and this physical version does not have English. I'm gonna cry. Japan is also getting some late physicals the West already have, like Sniper Elite 4, plus Vampire, which was delayed until now. Like I mentioned last time, this Japanese version has an exclusive collector's edition, and the game itself has English, so it may be worth picking up if you want an obscure collector's edition that probably most people in the West won't have. All right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight. This week, we had a theme of your favorite physical Switch game. I was very, very loose with the rules on this one. The game could have been from this year, last year. It didn't even need to be a Switch game. You know, it's the first time we've done it, so I thought I would be a little free this year. Next year, I'll be a bit more strict with the rules. Uh, remember, it was one game only. If you sent in more than one, then they will be saved for January week one. And before we do get further, just a reminder, next week we have another themed week. Friday is Christmas, so uh, I want you to show off your gaming gifts this Christmas. Or, you know, maybe gifts you've given to somebody, maybe your son or your daughter. It can be for any console, it can be big or small, one thing or many things. Just send in a picture of your Christmas gaming gifts. So yeah, uh, Friday is Christmas, so you don't have long to send in a photo. Try to send it before Saturday evening, and I'll be sure to put your Christmas hauls in next week. I know not everyone celebrates Christmas, and I respect that, but please hold off until the week after, and it will return to our normal schedule. All right, firstly, me, my physical of the year. Well, it came just in time. A couple of days ago, I reviewed which Spring 3 Refine. I was hugely impressed by the day one edition of the physical release. The standard early release came with an art book, which is fantastic, really nice quality, plus a soundtrack CD, and some of the best cover art I've seen. This is the Asian version cover art. The Japanese version comes with a different box art, so I'm told, but I'm glad I managed to get this one. It's beautiful. 
not bad for a standard retail release, right? The game itself is a simple looking JRPG, kind of like an Atelier game, but made on a budget. It's a lot of fun if you can get past the visuals and the fact that the, the phone release is only a couple of pounds. But this physical version really offsets that and I really recommend you check out my review to see this game in action. I think JRPG fans will want to pick it up. Both this Asian physical release and the Japanese physical release have English on the cartridge. There are no plans for a Western physical release at the moment. Links are below for this and the Japanese version if you want to import it for yourself. Alright you lot, your physical games of the year, I asked you to send in a photo of one game and a couple of sentences as to why. So everything you hear me quoting is the person sending it in, these are not my words. Alright, Meirin chose Hatsune Miku Project Diva Megamit saying, As for the reason, besides the game being extremely fun and addictive as hell, I think it has something quite special. Basically, it's overflowing with joyfulness. From the songs to the dances, everything just feels so energetic and lively. And in a year as depressing as 2020, I can only describe this game as a comfortable ray of hope that I could always come back to. Also, fun fact, it was actually Meirin who suggested the idea of a community spotlight for this series, so if you all enjoyed the community spotlight, thank Marion. It's all thanks to him. Flower Angel Rave chose Animal Crossing New Horizons saying, Probably basic and cliche, but New Horizons has got to be my favourite physical this year. I just keep coming back to it even now. Also, the interior and exterior art are just so cute and colourful and full of neat little details. It always makes me smile. Choco Loco James chose Link's Awakening Remake, the art book stating that it's the one game that he absolutely adores. Crit Cat chose Dragon Quest Builders 2 because they enjoyed it so much that she's getting it for her sons as they each recently got a Switch Lite. Outlaw Reaver chose Vanquish Bayonetta Collection for PS4 saying, Vanquish is a top 5 game of all time for me. I'm so thankful it was remastered. Happy Holidays! Lars chose the reprint of Hollow Knight because this one has all the DLC on the cartridge compared to the earlier release. Ninja Darkovia picked the Cat Quest 2 in 1 collection saying because this was an ultra rare porcelain signed copy of the game from Gentle Bros themselves that I won from their Twitter giveaway. Steve Bobrowski picked For the King saying me, my brother-in-law and 6 year old son had a blast figuring out and arguing where our party of 3 would go or do. Back of the box says one player but this game is so fun with 3 independent minds and ideas playing the 3 characters that can be independently controlled. Avery Brown chose Little Buster's Converted Edition, saying, It might be cheating choosing a port of a 2007 visual novel for my favourite 2020 physical Switch game of the year, but I will take any opportunity I have to rep Little Buster's. This is a story of friendship and love filled with life lessons. Having fun should be the purpose of our existence. Never be afraid of endings because endings are a part of life. With all the sadness and insanity of 2020 brought to the world, this is a story that we needed. To anyone who experienced Little Busters for the first time this year, I hope it was a ride worth riding. Lord Thanos chose Blasphemous saying, Picked up this physical game using Best Buy curbside pickup during the height of the coronavirus pandemic in March 2020. Best Metroidvania game of 2020 hands down and also includes great DLC. One of the top games for the Nintendo Switch, very underrated. Juan Carlos chose Caladrius Blaze stating, This game is the one that made me try shmups on the Nintendo Switch, making me a fan of the genre. Robin Hathroll chose Captain Tsubasa as it came as a very nice surprise to them. Streaming on the corner pushed me as far as they can go with the rules. Uh, two collector's editions from Limited Run, Valhalla and 2064. But they are both very connected games and come together beautifully as one package. They said, not only were these games the first visual novels that I played on the Switch, as a set they look so nice. Each box has magnets so the sets snap together when placed next to each other like in a picture. This is my favourite physical of the year. High quality games packaged in a high quality special edition. Jatin just wanted to show Pikmin 3 and its lovely little title screen. Transient Image chose the 5 in 1 physical release of Mega Man saying, for me there can only be one choice for my favourite physical of the year. I'm not into collector's editions at all but when I heard about this I had to get it. Problem is I heard about it well after the prices started going up. Thankfully my good friend in Japan was able to get one at retail price so I'm thankful I was able to get this as I played these games as a kid non-stop. 
Kozai Hard chose the collector's edition of Xenoblade, saying, My entry is nothing original, but as a person that rarely buys the collector's editions over standard, this was breathtaking for me. The art book, the vinyl, and a fantastic game I tried to play three times before, once on the Wii, twice on the 3DS, only now I sunk 176 hours, 100%ing the thing. Even better, this came as my 100th Nintendo Switch physical game. For me, not only my favorite game I picked up this year, but also the best game I played this year, and by extension, my most favorite game of 2020. Lunar Fire chose Slay the Spire, saying it was the first card-based game that I really got into. Palmer chose Divinity 2 Original Sin, saying, since I like to support indie developers for their hard work, they put in to produce awesome games. My personal best is Divinity 2 Original Sin, one of the best indie RPG games without a doubt, a must play for RPG lovers. Etienne chose Mr. Driller, as that's the one they have played the most. Gonzalo Garrido chose Bud Spencer and Terence Hill Slaps and Beans Collector's Edition from Strictly Limited because they waited over a year for this to arrive and they watched them growing up back in the day. Hayosha chose Animal Crossing New Horizons, saying, It's been one of my favorite series since the GameCube. New Horizons also helped me a lot with stress of the pandemic and everything else going on in 2020. Yikes Bikes chose Clubhouse 51 games and said that it's because it's addictive to this day. President is my favorite to play. Yusha didn't think that they brought a Switch game this year, so he decided to show off Root Double for the Vita, a Play Asia exclusive. Cartoon Soren chose Ukulele, saying, Mostly it's a good platform and something about it reminds me of the good old days. God of Resin chose Blasphemous, saying, I was so happy to have finally been able to grab a physical copy of this game. The imagery, the heavy religious influence, and the punishing gameplay makes it a great game for me. Bruno Silva chose TMS Encore, saying, First off, I'm a Mega Ten fanboy, and this was the closest I got to a Shin Megami Tensei game on the Switch this year. Hopefully 2021 will be much better with Persona 5 Scramble, Shin Megami Tensei 3 and 5. Secondly, this was one of the Wii U's best former exclusives that finally got a place to shine on the Switch. I had been hoping this would re-release on the Switch, and it came out of the blue. I'm so happy with it. Yo Daddy chose the recent Japanese version of Moonlighter using our links and code in the process many thanks and they said the dual gameplay of dungeon crawling at night and selling the goodies you find by day it truly accentuates one another with the winsome art style and ethereal music to boot. Rich Bergen chose the collector's edition of Stardew Valley saying Stardew has gotten me through some really dark days just looking at this physical release brings a smile to my face. Silverhouse chose Immortals, and they had a lot to say about it, so here is a full view of it if you want to pause the video. But just to say some small things, enticing exploration, fun puzzles, tense narrative, great musical score, and addictive gameplay packaged in awesome Greek mythology. Adam Kataskilo chose Immortals also saying, It reminds me of Kid Icarus, which I played a lot with my little brother. That's lovely. Visipon chose Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, the collector's edition saying, It was a great game on the Wii U and new 3DS already, but the changes they made to the user interface really helps with the questing and collecting. And the story, there's a reason people say it's the best video game story ever made when it first came out. Champ Dancer chose the same, although the US version and wanted to echo Visipon pretty much. Captain Slow chose Nexamon Extinction, saying, To me, this game was a surprise out of nowhere, but it delivered so much for such a low-costing game. Fantastic monster-catching game that both sticks to the original genre, as well as adding its own spin. Full of humor and well-thought-out monsters and characters, the developers also care for this game and take feedback and add new functions regularly. We need more games like this, and I'm looking forward to the DLC and sequels. Renato Faris, one of our YouTube members, stitched me up like a kipper, choosing the European exclusive Waifu Uncovered, saying, I was torn between two fantastic games from Funbox Media, Helmet and Waifu Uncovered. In the end, I had to go with the latter. It may not be the most technically accomplished game, but it excels where it matters. Fun. Bless your soul, Renato. Yandere Kun chose Brigandine, The Legend of Runersia, the Japanese version, with English saying, Way more fun than I expected, loved all the factions, recommend it strongly. By the way, there is a demo on the eShop, hint hint, nudge nudge. And also Yan Daddy Kun, uh, yeah, he's actually our executive producer, Alexander Kato. Inactive Yeti was another one to choose Xenoblade Chronicles Collector's Edition, saying, Awesome upgrades and a beautiful collector's edition. Ever since Tetsuya Takahashi blew my mind with Xenogears back on the PS1, I've been a big fan of his. Raven Knight chose Game Fairy's Vampire, saying, My first time buying a limited edition of a game. I waited a good few months for it too. 
James Church chose Atelier Riser saying, Although it came out last year, I only got it this year. I instantly fell in love with the charm and laid back story that this game has and I became obsessed with alchemy. Also, the artwork is really good on the box too and gives you a good picture of what to expect. I can't wait for the sequel and see how Riser and the team get on. Rain was another one to choose Xenoblade Chronicles, saying it was my entry point to the Xenoblade series and as an added bonus, my username felt a bit cooler now that I knew it was an accidental Xenoblade reference. Jazzy99 chose Animal Crossing New Horizons, saying I have to say my game of the year is Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's the only game that kept me sane throughout the quarantine. Rovest, despite the lack of English on this release, chose Metabots Classic Plus, saying being able to relive my Game Boy and Game Boy Color childhood of loving the era of gotta catch em all games from the 90s, Metabots Classic Plus is a faithful anthology of the first five Metabot games. Tyson barely chose Trails of Cold Steel 3, saying I love all the games in the series, but this is the only one on the Switch right now, it has to be my pick. Great world building, cameos from games in the past, fun battle system, the whole series is amazing, I only hope that one day the past titles come to the Switch. El Spagata chose a collector's edition of Wonder Song from Limited Run saying yes it's an older game and yes this is an LRG release uh, where I agree that they may not have the best business practices but this was such a unique game with a heartwarming story and awesome soundtrack which made a long lasting impression on me. In fact I was so touched that I had to hunt down the collector's edition just to get the soundtrack with a lot of the interesting insights in the creation of the game's music. I was lucky that someone sold just the collector's edition without the game for a very fair price. Z Giggler chose Last of Us Part 2, but didn't say why. I'm guessing it's because they enjoyed the game so much. Aurelian chose Moon Premium Edition as their favorite physical of the year. Although it was a close call, but they went for this one since it did actually release this year. Samuel Robertson is very passionate about Dandara, the collector's edition from Super Rare. I've put up their entire statement here if you want to read it, you know, pause the video and read it. It's a very important release to him due to having a black female protagonist which is underrepresented in gaming, there's no question about that. As I said, feel free to read his full statement on this one. It's a very important release for Samuel. OB Bolo chose Splasher from Red Art Games saying, well it's not exactly game of the year, it was incredibly addictive just having that one more go feel to it. JW Bowen chose It'll Do Limited Edition from One Print Games saying, I don't know if it's the best game of the year but this It'll Bad Boy screams 2020 to me. I ordered this game in January and honestly I thought I would not see it until 2021. Dudu Linz chose Horizon Chase Turbo, the special edition saying, this is not a new release, but this must be my favorite physical pickup of the year for several reasons. It's just fun to pick up and play, and it has the nostalgia factor of Top Gear from when I was a kid playing on my SNES, especially with the awesome soundtrack. It's also Brazilian, like Dudu Lins. Craw chose Blasphemous saying, The older I get, the rarer it is where I find a game I fall in love with. Blasphemous is an amazing game that just struck with me as the perfect Metroidvania. It includes the DLC and the game entered to my top five all-time games list. The difficulty is perfect, the art style is amazing. Marcio Quintanero chose Super Mario 3D also saying, it's a must-have for every Switch owner and is a magnificent collection of three games across three generations of Nintendo consoles. Although I wish they did more to these games, it's nice to have them in their original form. The same can't be said for the presentation of the game, that I wish they put a little more effort into and give us more than just a soundtrack list. Steven665 chose Resident Evil Triple Pack saying, this is my first time playing Resident Evil 4 and I couldn't stop playing. Love the gameplay, one of my favorites. Rick Kralbert chose Ease 8 saying, This is the game that meant the most to me so far on the Switch. It is a really tough competition though, so I really had to think hard about this one. I 100%ed it this year and I loved every minute of it. Can't wait for number 9. Andrew Kelly chose Sean Bean's favorite, Void Bastard. And I hope you excuse the accent I'm putting on here in honor of our Bean himself. I'm not good with FPS, sadly played any before. They always make me feel like I'm playing with my face pressed up against screen. It stressed me out. Who shot me? From where? Oh, I'm dead. But then they were void bastards. All of the above complaints equally true of this game, and yet it's all effing funny. Visuals are great, pretty unique. The sound and dialogue and the stress is real, but the adrenaline was awesome in hindsight if you managed to get whatever effed up item you needed off a ship and escape with your life. And the game is so effing British, and it doesn't even feel like there's enough games like that. It reminds me of watching Red Dwarf on a Friday night as a kid, but in game form. It's great because I had so many prejudices against it going in, but then I loved it so much in the end. I wish it were longer, and I wish for a sequel. I don't think Andrew Kelly actually talks like that, considering he's Irish, but you know, 
has to do it in bean form. Dane Wilkinson is my true real brother picking Final Fantasy VII Remake saying, easily my favorite physical of the year and probably all time. A phenomenal game, the best I've played in 2020. I'm delighted to have the art book, the Sephiroth steel book, and possibly the greatest soundtrack to ever grace a game to go with it. I 100% agree, Dane. It is my game of the year. It's not even close. And it's, you know, it's one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time. Park Ranger chose the ever quirky shooter Blackbird saying, a game that makes me smile and seems perfect for the Switch. Fantastic fun. Roran chose Terminator Resistance, wasn't expecting that one, saying it was a big surprise since uh, the company made the crappy Rambo game before, so there was a little hope, but it managed to be very fun, and the last part of the game was a blast to go through. Love it. Best Terminator game to date, although, you know, not perfect. Bloody Angel's first contribution was picking Clanad as their game of the year, saying, I haven't finished it, but I like the general story, and I've recently gotten into visual novels. I also started with no knowledge about it, so it's been interesting. Santa Flesh Flavoured Ice Cream chose Kemco RPG Selection Volume 1 saying, It's my first import ever, but since I got it, I've been in love with it. It's not the best quality of games, but honestly, I've been playing the heck out of it, especially as Divine Hearts and Dragon Sinker. Also, the cover art is something I'm in love with. Every time I look on it on the shelf, I need to get it out and look at the art on the back. It's a weird pick, I know, but I haven't really got a lot in 2020 due to the virus, but the ones I did get, I love. But this is the one I'm loving the most in my entire collection right now. Right now, Ganicus chose Arcade Spirit saying, I know it was released last year, but I picked it up this year. It's very nostalgic and my first visual novel that I finished. I love the characters and hearing about video games throughout the story. Boombox chose Blasphemous saying, The graphics in Blasphemous are gritty and highly detailed. The sword-based combat feels brutal and the execution animations are equally grim. There are numerous secrets to keep you exploring and the story is engrossing and had me questioning my own motivations in the world of Custodia. Goma chose Witcher 3 saying, Yeah, it came out in 2019, but I couldn't get my hands on a copy until after Christmas. I sunk over 215 hours into this game and I would have kept going if there was more to do. The rich story was what did it for me and it's the perfect example of how to do an open world game in my opinion. Shaft Zero chose Valkyria Chronicles 4 saying, Still will be my top game of the year because nice visuals, 10 out of 10. Great story, 9 out of 10. Best strategy gameplay, 9 out of 10. Shikification chose the Final Fantasy 7 and 8 double pack saying, uh, especially for Final Fantasy 7, I know this released in Asian religions last year, but it got a European release this year at the same time as the Asian release of Final Fantasy 9. FF7 is such a great game from my childhood. Jim Wiley also picked the same, saying the struggle has been real, one game to rule my year, but I think I narrowed it down to this one or two in one pack as being my favorite recent purchase. It's got the best of two worlds, my favorite Final Fantasy and most other people's. Executive producer Santa Tartaruga chose Mario Kart 8, saying good moments are made best when shared with loved ones. In this spirit, the best Switch game on my collection goes to the classic Mario Kart 8, countless fun nights with family and friends, happy holidays. Robert chose Blasphemous saying it was the favorite physical game that he played this year. It's also absolutely beautiful. I think Miguel Torres chose Indivisible or maybe it was a recent pickup. I'm not sure. <laughs> but he did say this game needed more love and finally made it to the Switch and is truly one of my favorite games on the system period. Too bad the people who made it didn't see any profits that they needed to stay in business. But I'm glad it made it to North American regions. The One chose Animal Crossing, saying that between him and his wife, they racked up a total of 1,610 hours of playtime. That is impressive. Jonathan chose a collector's edition of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Scarlet, saying, Bought the games on Vita and PS4, so I've actually bought it three times. Something about the cover just makes me smile, and the game itself is not really that bad. Good for practicing your reflexes and speed. Graham chose one of the collector's editions of Captain Two Bastards, saying, This is definitely my favorite collector's edition of the year. The named footy shirt is fantastic, as is the figurine and artwork. It's the biggest item in my collection and my favorite. Anaheim Rookie chose the wonderful import of Okami. Don't blame me, man. JP chose the collector's edition of Owlboy, saying it's by far his favorite collector's edition. From the gameplay to the mechanics, character, story, graphics, it's one of the best indie games I've ever played. Also, those are some nice pins. N0 chose Shantae and the Seven Sirens. I was not expecting to get into this game so hard. Now I understand why people love Shantae so much. Tommy Mayers chose the early Asian release of Alpaca Ball saying, This is without a doubt the best Alpaca themed soccer video game ever made. I don't think many would disagree there. 
Ike chose Ikaruga saying, The awesome release from Nicholas of Ikaruga, including everything I like, a paperwork cover, a decent booklet, and on top of that, the Metal Earth Ikaruga spaceship. Incredible. Nothing can top that in 2020. And for me, it's the new limit of physical releases. Alolan Jojo chose Animal Crossing saying, Loved the game so much that I got another one so I could travel between my islands. One set to the Northern Hemisphere and one set to the Southern. Certified chose Hollow Knight saying, I love the hand-drawn art and the music is captivating. The variety of enemies and bosses is staggering and it's fun exploring the world and discovering secrets. I can't wait for Silk Song. And finally to end this mammoth week, we've got Craig Morgan with Animal Crossing as his pick of the year. He said it helped him get through this pandemic for at least the first four months or so. I think we can all relate to that. And that's it guys. I hope you had a wonderful year collecting games. I always enjoy seeing what you guys pick up. Remember, next week is your Christmas gift. Send me your picks over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use hashtag let's get physical. Or you can email it into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with community spotlight so I don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. And you can submit your photo there in the submission section. The Discord server link is below. Remember, next week, Christmas gifts, so I'll be rather suspicious if I get any entries before Friday. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this absolutely massive episode of New Physicals. Please check out last week's episode in case you missed it. Not a lot of people watched that one. Views were way, way down on that. I'm not sure why. But if in case you missed it, check that out, please. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Ganicus, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, and our brand new executive, Alexander Cato, and all the others who have joined our memberships. Thank you ever so much for your support. And thank you for watching this video. If you watched all this, I don't know, what is it, like 30 minutes or something stupid. Oh my lord, it is massive. Yeah, if you watched all the way here, one, you've got way too much time on your hands. And two, I love you very much. The longer you watch, the more it helps us out, honestly. Thank you ever so much. My voice is absolutely destroyed. I've been talking for 40 minutes right now. Probably going to edit it down to 30. But yeah, have a good Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, have a good week. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>